Hi, this is Peter with Simbana. A few weeks ago, I was giving a presentation at a conference and I was demonstrating some of the newer aspects of Simbana. And one of the people in the audience asked if any of the information that was being displayed on the patient monitor had a mathematical background to it. Was any of this being simulated, the pharmacology and the physiology? And I said, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. That's one of my roles here. So I thought today I would give you a little behind the scenes look at some of the nerdiest aspects of my job at Simvana. This screen that we're looking at right now is a workspace that I created in Unreal Engine to help me test the effects of different physiological parameters and pharmacologic interventions on a patient and how all of that affects what becomes their vital signs on the monitor. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click Start Simulation and we'll start to see some changes happening. So if you see in the black here at the bottom with all of the red numbers, we have the blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, end tidal CO2, and so on. And these are the actual values that would appear on the patient's anesthesia monitor. All of these inputs and values up here at the top of the screen cascade into one another and affect each other and result in these values that appear on the monitor. So there are a lot of different things that we can change that will affect these values. For right now, I'm going to administer 15 milligrams of ephedrine. Obviously, this patient with a heart rate of 73 and a blood pressure of 120 over 80 does not need ephedrine, but in about 60 to 75 seconds or so, we'll start to see how the ephedrine changes the heart rate and blood pressure. And looking just at the heart rate um, itself, you can well imagine there are a lot of factors that go into what calculates the patient's heart rate at any given moment. For example, we have a fluid balance system here, and some of that starts based on the patient's um, gender, their age, their weight, how long they've been NPO, which gives sort of their starting um, fluid balance. And then the whole time we're calculating values for insensible losses, blood loss, urine output, and so on. So that's constantly changing and being updated. And your fluid system can obviously affect your heart rate. So I see at the bottom here, the heart rate is climbing and the blood pressure is climbing as an effect of the ephedrine. Um, we can institute hemorrhage that would also affect the heart rate and the blood pressure differently. So all of these values have to be um, compounded and accounted for. Um, if we look at up here in the top right, we have the volatile anesthetic model, and I'm using a four-compartment model. So we have the anesthesia circuit, because anesthesia doesn't build up um, to 100% of its value in the circuit immediately. That takes a little bit of time. And then once that amount is calculated and delivered to the patient, it goes into their lungs, their circulatory system, and gets redistributed to the vessel-rich group, the muscle group, and the fat group. So this little chart right here is calculating the amount of accumulated anesthetic in these different groups. So you can see the vessel-rich group is starting to pick up uh, some from the arterial uh, side. The muscle group hasn't really started to accumulate very much, and the fat group hasn't started really at all we actually have to build a patient digitally when we get started. And this area that's called preoperative data is where we take those values and use them to build the foundation of a patient based on their age. We can set their starting oxygen saturation, their AA gradient, what is their left ventricular end diastolic diameter, um, hematocrit, what is their muscle tone beginning? Um, do they have any disease conditions that would affect their baseline muscle tone? What is their level of consciousness, respiratory quotient, and a lot of other values. So when we click start, we take those values that are adjustable, we create a digital patient based on those values, and then we allow these systems to interact with the patient. One of the questions I get sometimes is, how do you know what those values are? How do you know this drug works this way and has that peak effect? How do you know how these systems interact? Well, uh, it usually starts with, um, I'll dig through wonderful books like these. I have a whole big stack of them, and that helps me develop sort of the plan for the system. How do these um, different areas of, say, the cardiovascular system affect one another? both upstream and downstream, and that gives me sort of an overall plan of what I'm going to work with. At this point, I'm generally sketching out the system on legal pads. From there, I will go to research studies where, say we used ephedrine earlier, I'm looking for what is the effect of how many milligrams of ephedrine on first normal healthy adults. And I'll take several studies like that, 
look at their uh, their bell curves, look at the standard deviations in the dosages, and then start to get actual figures that can be used. Um, at that point, I'll usually put it into a spreadsheet and start trying to lay it out over time with different doses and see if my numbers come out right. And then I'll actually start to program it in Unreal Engine and start doing live tests. And sometimes the math is a little bit tricky. Some of it is over my head and I have to go back into the books to figure out parts of it. But um, it sounds really boring. I mean, these um, if these are not exciting books. They're not at all. But what is exciting is when you get the system working and you look at it on screen and you're like, wow, that, the heart rate actually did exactly, exactly what I thought it was going to do. And we also map things out so that not every patient is the same. We use bell curves and systems to generate um, a randomness, an appropriate randomness into the system so that the patient will act appropriately. And what I mean by that is not every person is going to respond to ephedrine the same way. Even if you try to map the patients as close as you can together, same age, weight, everybody is going to have a slightly different response. And that's what's going to generate the bell curve of responses that we see in research studies. And we do the same thing so that when you boot up a patient in Simbana, each one is very real and each one is just a little bit different, just like in the real world. So the same dose may not always have the same effect every time. In the first release of Simvana, the systems that are integrated are the volatile anesthetic model, the carbon dioxide cycle, and the oxygenation and desaturation systems. The next to be incorporated will be the heart rate and blood pressure, and in particular, their response to the volatile anesthetics. For me, working on the physiology and pharmacology engine is definitely the most challenging aspect of my role in this project, but it's also been the most rewarding when you see these complex moving parts suddenly interlock and move together in the way that they're supposed to. That's really exciting. And um, as a confession, I had for decades almost an emotional aversion to calculus. I didn't want anything to do with it, and I was sort of frightened with it, and I didn't really know what good it was until this project. And so when I set forth trying to work through some of the formulas and equations that seemed too complex, when I finally got a couple of them to work the way that they should, I gained a new confidence in it, and all of a sudden I saw the application of how this works. It was something I'd avoided for a long time. And I try to build that sense into the lessons for Simvana. A lot of people are afraid of complex scenarios. So if you can give them just a little bit of a success, let's start with something small and build your confidence that way, then I think it eases people into a system where they feel better about their, their competencies and their, and their abilities to perform. So anyway, that's, that's my take on the nerdy world of Simvana and my struggles with calculus that I'm working to overcome. Uh, be sure to click like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.